Hello, welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen, we have the second puzzle that we're going to be trying by this phenomenon from Hong Kong, Under Beyond, just 16 years old. And this puzzle, as his last puzzle did, has had our testers, you know, basically dropping their jaws in admiration. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to trying this. Uh, now, a couple of other things I want to mention. Today is our birthday. Uh, believe it or not, uh, on the 11th of June 2017, we uploaded our first video to this channel. Um, I subjected myself to watching that video just a few minutes ago. Yeah, I think we've come a long way, both in terms of, uh, uh, well, in terms of everything, but obviously a huge thank you to everyone watching the video. It means a great deal to us to have so many people who seem to enjoy the content now. And I think we've upped our game. Um, and Chiel Beanhacker, who of course is responsible to, for our spreadsheet, incredible spreadsheet, which documents every single episode of Cracking the Cryptic through that three year period. You know, and it tells you if you want to just find the little killer Sudokus, you can find out exactly when they were published and go straight straight to the videos. Um, so Chiel created the spreadsheet and he also has sent us a birthday puzzle. And it's an aquarium puzzle, a themed aquarium puzzle. Um, and we've put it up there on Patreon. So those of you who support us on the channel on Patreon, we are massively grateful for that. And there is a bonus puzzle there by Chiel, and it's really, really lovely. Um, and it's actually got, if you complete the puzzle correctly, there is a hidden message in the solution, which is also extremely clever. So uh, do have a look at that. Um, now, how does Under Beyond's puzzle work? Well, it's the same rule set as his last puzzle. And this is a fascinating idea. I think it's, I think it's his original idea. I don't think anyone else is producing uh, puzzles using this variation. So let me read the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Each cage forms a line. Now let me just stop there and explain what that means. In a normal killer Sudoku, you can have cages that sort of do anything. You know, they can be enormous cages. Um, well, they can't be bigger than nine cells, but you know, we could we could very easily have a cage made of the yellow squares like that. Well, in this variation, you can never have a cage that looks like this because if you study the cages. They are all exactly one cell wide. They form like little snakes. Um, and there's no, there's never a two by two area within a cage. And that allows Under Beyond to use the following rules. So the number at the top left of a cage shows the sum of the numbers between the smallest and the largest number of the line. For clarification, the smallest and largest digit do not have to be at the end or yeah, at the end of each cage. So let's pick an example cage, this 21 cage down here. That's saying somewhere in this cage that is a consecutive sequence of digits that sums up to 21. Let's say it was, let's say it was all four. Then these squares would have to be the highest and lowest digits in the cage. And these four central cells then would have to add up to 21. And the clarification is saying that it's not necessary for the highest and lowest digits to sit at the end of the line. You know, it would be perfectly possible for those two cells to be the highest and lowest digits, which would mean these three cells have to sum up to the 21 total we're after. Uh, the only other part of the rule set is that numbers cannot repeat in a cage. Well, that's absolutely standard for killer Sudoku. Um, as I say, do have a go at this. Um, it's rare. That I get such unanimous feedback from the testers and such glowing feedback. So yeah, 16 years old and sort of has mastered the art of producing brilliant, brilliant puzzles. It's quite incredible. Um, yeah, so do have a go. You click on the link under the video to play along as usual. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, and where do we start? So my eyes are immediately drawn to the zero cages, but I think that's sort of a remnant of sandwich Sudoku where a zero clue would be quite useful. In this variation, I'm not sure it's useful at all because all we're saying is that the highest and lowest digit in these cages are next to each other because the sum of the cells between the highest and lowest number has to be zero. But that doesn't actually tell us what those digits are, nor does it tell us where they're positioned. So I think I should stop looking at the zero cages. Oh, okay, there's a 20 cage. 
this 20 cage, how, would, how is this going to work? Well, self-evidently, you could never have a two cell sum adding to 20. Uh, that was impossible, even if we added nine and eight together, we'd only get 17. So the cells that sum to 20 here must be the central three cells of this cage. And they must be bounded by those two cells, which have to be the highest and lowest digits in the cage. Now that is crucially important because that any cage that contains a nine, the nine must be must, must bound the cage. It can't be part of the sandwich filling. So these three squares cannot include a nine. And if they can't include a nine, how on earth do you get to 20? Well, there's only one way, five, seven, and eight. So this is five, seven, and eight. And that means that one of those squares must be a nine because it has to be greater than the eight that forms or well, that's part of the sandwich filling. And so the other side, so if this was the nine, for example, this square would have to be the lowest digit in the cage, which would mean it would have to be one, two, three, or four. Ah, but hang on, there's an interaction here between this cage and this cage. Because a 12 total must be at least a two cell sandwich. So the only way of having sort of a low and high digit and having a sandwich filling that's two cells large is if these two cells are the sandwich filling, they have to add up to 12. They can't be five and seven. Because if they are five and seven in these two squares, one of those squares would be an eight, but the other one would be unfillable. So this is not five, seven, and it can't be three, nine, because if it's three, nine, what bounds the sandwich? There's no digit higher than a nine that can bound the sandwich. So this, this has to be four, eight. So this is an eight. Oh, and we can continue now. If this, if this is an eight in the sandwich, there must be a nine bounding the sandwich. So there's a nine in one of those squares. This is not nine anymore. That must be the nine bounding the 20 cage. The nine bounces back in there and sees that one. So that's a nine. This square here has got to be less than four. So that's a one, two or a three. Uh, and that one's a one, two or a three as well, because that's got to be less than five but it can't be four because there's a four in its box so there's a nine over there and an eight over there by sudoku and so far this is going remarkably smoothly um famous last words right this cage four five six Ah, now that's interesting. That is a nine cell cage. So what do we know about nine cell cages? Well, given that numbers can't repeat in a cage, this cage therefore contains all of the nine digits one to nine, exactly once each. Therefore, we know that the yellow cells sum to 45 because that's what we get if we sum the digits from one to nine. Oh, this is very nice, actually, because that means if if there is definitely a 1 and a 9 in the yellow cells, the 1 and the 9 form the boundaries of the sandwich. But the total here is 27. So what we can say with certainty is that there are cells summing up to 8 that live outside the one and the nine in this uh, 27 cage. Now, how do I get that? Well, 45 minus one minus nine minus 27 is eight. So, you know, if this was a one and this was a nine, those two squares would have to sum up to eight. If this was a one and this was a nine, Ah, oh, well, that's not possible because the eight can't live on its own in this cell. You can see that the nine can't be in any of those positions. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's either one or two cells outside the sum in this box. 
there can't be three cells adding to eight outside the sum because to make three cells add to eight you always have to use a one and that would repeat the one in the cage so there's either one or two cells outside the sum now if it's one cell outside the sum this would have to be the eight and this would have to be the nine because this can't be a nine so that would be a one here a nine here and an eight here which looks possible doesn't it but there must be a one in one of those three cells and there must be a nine in one of those three cells ah now this cell this cell is interesting now why is this cell interesting well I th let's have a look at whatever goes in this square where does it go in this box it can't go in the column obviously so whatever's in this square can't go in the column but this is also part of the 27 cage so it's ruled out of all of those seven cells so whatever goes in this square must appear in one of those two squares so it's it looks like it might be the nine, doesn't it? We'll put a nine up there. Unfortunately, looks like is not actually logic. It's just conjecture. So I'm not going to put it in. Bobbins. I don't quite see how that. No, I'm not sure what I meant to do it must be this cage somehow it just it feels like it's such a powerful restriction on the grid ah now hang on look this cell is very interesting this cell is very interesting because this cell sees almost all of the 27 cage. Let me just, um, so this cell, it sees the whole of this column. It sees the whole of that, those ones from the box and it sees that one in the row. Now we know the 27 cage has all of the digits from one to nine in it. So whatever I put in here has to appear somewhere in the 27 cage and the only square it could go in would be that one so these two squares are the same so this can't this can't be a one this can't be a one because if this is a one and it has to be the same as that digit now i can't make the 16 cage work because 16 you can't have two cells summing to 16 because they'd have to be seven and nine, and then what would you put here to bound the sandwich? It's got to be a cell, it's got to be a digit bigger than a nine. So this this is not, well, this is not one. The one is in one of those two squares. That means, uh, so that, that, the problem, so if if the nine is here now that oh no that would be okay the nine could be here if the one's here and this is a two cell outside the sum ah so whatever is in this square has to appear in this square Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. Now, now look, we can do the same thing with this square. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. L look at this. Look at this. And this square now, obviously whatever we put in this cell is not the same digit as is in this cell. So it's not possible for this cell and this cell to be the same digit. So what? what whatever we put in here where does it go in the 27 cage it doesn't go there it doesn't go in the column it doesn't go in the box so it has to go here these two cells are mirrors of each other i'm sorry i hope that that coloring is okay um but these two cells are mirrors of each other and, and by symmetry this can't this can't be a one or a nine because if this is a one or a nine 
the 16 is broken again because I can't make two cells add up to 16. This is not a one or a nine. So this is not a one or a nine. And that means those two squares are definitely outside the sum in the 27 cage. And there can only be a maximum of two cells outside the sum in the 27 cage. So this has to be a one. This has to be a nine. These two cells add up to eight. So these two cells add up to eight. Good grief, there's a nine up here. This one, look, it can't be five or seven. And we can't repeat the one in the case. So if these two add up to eight, two six is possible. Twos and sixes can go in either position, but three five is only possible if it's this way round. So this square is a 2, 3 or a 6. This square is a 2, 5 or a 6, just mirroring what we've proved so far. This logic here is absolutely stunning. I, I mean, so original. It's like the perfect... He's, Under Beyond has found... He's invented this type and then he's found this trick and he's executed it with just such a plomb. It really is beautiful. Let's see, one other thing I'm noticing here now, if these add up to eight, this 16 cage can't contain a nine, look, because of this nine here. So, if it can't contain a nine, how do you make this a three cell sandwich? You can't, because to make it a three cell sandwich, given these two add up to eight, you'd have to put an eight in one of those two positions. But then once you do that, of course, you need a nine to bound the sandwich, which you can't have. So this, this is a four cell sandwich, which means these two squares have got to add up to eight as well. And you can never use a one as a sandwich filling. So this is a quadruple then on the numbers two, three, five, and six. And it must be bounded by a one on one side because we know we need a number lower than two. So these squares are one, seven and eight in some order. There's a one on one side and then a seven. Oh, that can't be an eight look. Um, and then there's a seven or an eight on the other side. I don't believe it. Look, this this is important. This is important. There is a nine in one of those three cells. So how do we make a sandwich total of five now? The sandwich total is either in those two cells or it's in one of these two cells and it's a single five. If it's in, if it's a two cell sandwich, how do we make a two cell sandwich add up to five? You can't use one and four in this variation because that would require a number lower than one to bound the sandwich. And we're not, we're not using zeros in this puzzle. So the only way of having a two cell sandwich is with the numbers two and three. And now you can't make those two squares add up to eight anymore because there's a one, two, three in the column. So one, seven, two, six, three, five are all ruled out. This is not a two cell sandwich. This is a single five. And it must be in one of the two highlighted cells. And the five sees that one. So that's not five, which means that's not three, which means that's not three and that's not five. And we've got a two, six pair now. Oh, we've got all sorts of stuff going on now. We've got two, six pair here. So that square must be a two or a six by Sudoku. That's a three, four pair. Four's over here. So this is a four, this is a three. 
There's a four up here. That's not a one look because of the one here. And this two six here means these two squares are not two and six because they're in the same um, cage. So this becomes a three five pair. This square, this square can't be a two, because if it's a two, you can't put a two in in one of those either of those two squares, and that means you can't make those two squares add up to eight. This has to be a three. That's not a three. Three lives down there. Uh. Oh, oh, hang on, this square. We looked at this earlier. Now, this can't be a nine anymore. So what? whatever we put in this square is mirrored in this square in the center. Let's remind ourselves of what's going on with that one. So whatever we put in here, where does it go in box five of the grid? Well, it can't go in the same cage as it. It can't go in the same column as it. It can't be a nine, so it can't be that one. So it has to be whatever we put in that square. That square is a five, seven. These are mirrors of each other. Um, five, seven pair now in column six. That's got to be a one at the bottom. That's not a one, therefore. So this is the higher bound of the sandwich. There's a one in one of those cells. Ah, ah yeah, OK. Now let's revisit this five cage again. Because the five cage, we know the nine is the highest digit in, in this cage. And we know there must be a digit on the lower bound, which is a number lower than a five. Which means it must be a one, two, three or four. But look, one, two, three, four are ruled out of all of those positions. So the lower boundary has to be in this cell. Once the lower boundary is in this cell, this cell must be the five. Because if it's not... You, you can't put five in the sandwich. You're going to have a number bigger than five. That must be the nine. Oh my goodness me. These two squares now, seven and eight. Uh, five, seven pair here. Oh, does that affect the seven cage then? Yes, it does. Look, this seven cage, if it's just a seven as the a single seven on its own as the sandwich filling, it would have to go in one of those three cells and it can't because there's a five seven in the column. So this must be a two cell sandwich. And if it's a two cell sandwich, it must take up those two or those two cells but it can't be two five and it can't be one six obviously so it must be three four there must be a three and a four in those cells look at that does nothing that that was good logic and it's done nothing for me bother <laughs> um Sorry about this. Now it's time to stare again. Try and spot something new. I love this puzzle so far though. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, hang on. There you go. This 27 cage. We've got a 2, 6 there. 1, 3, 4 and a 9. So these three squares have got to be the other three digits. They have to be 5, 7 and 8. So that's the three. That must be the five. This square must must be a four because it's the only cell that we've not pencil marked. Again, this just does nothing though. Uh, 
Oh dear. Um. Ah, now, hang on, I haven't looked at this 21 cage. Here's some logic. Here is some nice logic. How, how can this 21 cage have a three cell sandwich filling? How can it have a three cell sandwich filling? Now, the trick, I think, is to realize that if it has a three cell sandwich filling, given you can't use a nine inside the sandwich, you'd have to use eight, seven, and six. But look, these nines. How, how do we make this work? If there is an eight, seven, and six inside the sandwich, we know that nine must bound the sandwich. So where does the nine go in the 21? It would have to go here or here because of these nines. Now, whichever one it goes in, these three cells become the three cell sandwich, but they include a three. So they cannot add to 21. So this is not a three cell sandwich, it's a four cell sandwich, which means these two squares. Oh yeah, yeah, which means these two squares are the extremes. And given that therefore we can see there is definitely an eight inside the sandwich, there is a nine in the boundary and the nine cannot go here. Oh my goodness me. So, Ah, uh, so these, so there's definitely three and eight in the sandwich. They add to 11. We need 10 more. We can't use one, nine, two, eight, or three, seven. So this must, ah, uh, this must be four, six, as well as the three and the eight. The four must go here. Oops. These must be three, six, and eight. This square must be a one or a two because it must be less than three. Four must live down here by Sudoku. Four can't be there anymore. Three, six, eight here means that's a two. That means that's a six. Ah, oh, that's a red six. That must be mirrored here. That means that's a two. That's a two. The two here means that's a one look. There's a one over there. This two means that's a one. Oh my goodness, we're getting somewhere now. There's a one in this zero cage. So that is the lower boundary of the zero cage. And look, we've almost got the whole of this row finished. Uh, we just need to place two and six, I think. Well, that can't be a six because there's a six in the box. So that must be a two. That means that's a two, that's a six. These two squares have got to be five and seven in some order. These squares have got to be four, five and seven. Oh, well, no, this is, a, this is, this is resolvable because if we make that if, if this is anything other than seven, let's make it five, for example. We now, we've got a zero total here. So we know if we have a one in, in this box, the digit next to the one must be the highest digit in the box. Well, the ne digit next highest, the highest, ah, you know what I mean. This is the highest digit, so it's a five, which means these three squares have to be two, three, and four, and they definitely can't be. This cannot be five. That's got to be the seven. That's got to be a five now by Sudoku. The, oh, oh no, three, six is okay. Ooh. So yeah, we've now got seven as the top boundary. So we know that these two squares here have to be between one and seven, but they can't be two, four, and five. There are only two digits. It can be three and six. That's not three anymore. That's an eight by Sudoku. That can't be four either because of the four here. Well, 
1 must be in one of those squares by Sudoku again. That's these ones operating on the grid. 2 must live in one of these cells. Six must live in one of those cells. Two must live in one of these cells. How long have I had? Half an hour. That, that, that has flown by. I feel like I've gone really fast. Um, now, now, this column, look, we need a seven and a nine to complete the column. Ah, aha, this is important. So we know that there's a three and a four, which are the sandwich filling here. And we know the three and the four are next to a six. In fact, that can't be a six as a result of that. Whoa. Um, so the six is either here with a three, four beneath it, or it's here with a three, four above it. Therefore, six is the highest cell in this seven cage. Now that is seriously problematic, except that there is just room. We've got twos here, so that you can't put a two in this box. So you must put a one and a five in those squares. And there's a five here, so this, this must be five, this must be one, the six must go up here to leave room for the three, four pair in the middle. The one means this is not a one. The five means that's a five. Look, seven here. Oh, the one must go in there. Oh, and that's in a, that's another one in a zero cage down here. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe we'll, let's have a look along here. We need two, three, six, and eight. So there must be a two in one of those squares. This has got, oh, two, three, and six. So that has to be an eight just by Sudoku. Oh no, not eight. Uh, sorry, I just realized I've got an eight in here. I missed, I've missed, I've misanalyzed the row. Two, three, six, and nine. Oh, is that still okay? That's still, <laughs> that's still a different naked single. But now we've got two, three, and six to place. There must be a, there still must be a two over there. This has to be three or six. Or oh, it can't be three. Let's look at this cell. Given this cell has to be a two, three, or a six, we know it's not two. Can it be a three? If it's a three, it's next to a zero. It's next to a one in a zero clue. So these would have to be the high, lowest and the highest digits. We'd have to put two into all three of those squares. Now, that is not allowed in Sudoku um, for many reasons. So this is definitely not three. This must be six. There must be a three over there. So this becomes a two, three pair. These squares, oh, these squares can't have a two in them and they have to be between one and six. They've got to be three, four, and five. There's a, we get them. There's a three here. This is a four, five pair. There's a five here. These must be seven and eight. That looks okay. The four fixes the four and the eight up here. That fixes the seven. That fixes the eight. That fixes the eight here. These squares have got to be six, seven, and nine in some order. There's so a seven up there, nine here. So this is six or seven. Now, presumably, we can do some stuff over on this side of the grid now. So we've got seven, eight, nine in this column, and two, three, and six into these squares. So that's got to be a two or a three, I think. One here means that's a two. Should have spotted that before. That's not a two, therefore. Oh, is that a one, two pair? If I trust my pencil marks, and I will, that is a one, two pair. So this square has to be a seven or an eight. That looks okay with the contents of column five.
this square we can just fill in actually that must be a four look that fixes the four and the three that fixes the three and the six six must go here by sudoku these squares have got to be two and three to complete column eight there's a three there that becomes a three that becomes a two that fixes the two and the one the one goes here by sudoku we've got seven eight nine triple in this row so that's a four the two fixes the two and the three, the three and the six, the seven, the nine, the six. Oh my goodness, this is an eight now. That must be a seven by Sudoku. That's an eight, that's a seven. That must be a seven. That's got to be a nine. That's working with this box look because we needed the, we need the highest and the lowest digits to be together in this zero clue and they are. So I think... Unless I've done a, I've misprinted something. It's looking okay. Um, that must be a nine by Sudoku. The seven fixes the seven. The five that gives us a five here, a seven here, and an eight here. Check. Yeah, that's it. What a puzzle! What a beautiful, beautiful Sudoku puzzle. Loved it, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.